Okay, so think of the gunk in here as having atoms. That, here's an atom, and I'll just draw four of them. Okay, now they they've got electrons. Let's say these are the nuclei of these atoms, and they got electrons buzzing around them, right? Okay. Well, what happens is this: is that this the electron here gets attracted to this positive charge, and it actually kind of distorts the atom, and it kind of you know the, that electron cloud you got from chemistry, right? It kind of is attracted to this and it kind of cancels out that positive charge. Now what does that do? That leaves more room for more charge to come in there. So it draws in another positive charge and it distorts another atom. Now the if you look at the surface, now by the way, hey have you ever rubbed a balloon on your head and then stuck it on the wall and it sticks? Or have you ever had your socks, you pull them out of the dryer and they stick to things? That's because the balloon and the wall are made out of dielectric materials. These are called bound charges. That is, if, you, if I look at this, let's, let's draw another picture. Here's the dielectric material. And what happens is that these atoms get distorted like this. And uh, if you've got the positive charge from the charge over here, these get a negative charge right there. But what does that do to the other side of the uh, electron cloud? That gives it a net positive charge over here. But what does that do to the next atom over? It distorts it. And it just kind of cascades all the way through the material until you get to the other edge of the material. And you get a positive bound charge over here. But that, pos but that positive bound charge, to the, this is the dielectric material I've drawn here, kind of cancels out the negative charge that was on this side of the capacitor. And what it does is it, it, it sort of propagates this electric field through here, and it allows you for the same voltage, here's my battery down here, am I still on camera? Yeah, sort of. Uh, it allows you to store more charge for the same voltage. Okay. And um, and so uh, it, it and these bound charges. When you take a balloon and you rub it uh, on your head, you're giving the balloon a charge. And then you put it on the wall. Well, the wall gets this negative charge. I, I, I'm thinking that it's positive charge on the balloon. I actually can't remember. So here's my balloon. And let's say it has a positive charge. Well, it creates this negative charge that's bound to the atoms. It can't escape, so it can't discharge this. All it does is attract it, and it sticks to the wall. Okay, and um, it'll stay there as long as these bound charges, or the charges that have been collected by the balloon, don't go away. They will eventually kind of go off. Um, but in a capacitor, we take advantage of these bound charges, and now, some materials have a little bit of an effect, like paper. It allows you to store um, 3.7 times the amount of charge on here than you would have if there was nothing. But the, you know, um, bake light is 4.9. Um, now. It's, it, by the way, it's these uh, materials that they're really trying to figure out new materials, the material science of this, to make ultra capacitors that we were talking about before. Okay, so um, there are uh, some interesting effects with this, but I'm going to let you uh, work the example problems because they, they kind of, if you go through the two example problems, you'll get to that. But that's. Um, that's it for assignment five.